the member of the oceans that I have the most power interest in, because we, we found out what the oceans did to a degree before they actually showed up, because they were, you know, they were a contest win, and we were able to see relatively what they did from the entries, from the posts of the people that entered them, and Callum's had, like, an atomic power, and I'm unsure if this is just a... Like, if, if Mishima tweaked his ether gear to make it more fair, because obviously, like, atomic hacks is, like, really crazy, or if this is a technique that goes with it. Like, maybe Callum can't atomize stuff, but he just, you know, just didn't kill Shiki immediately because he's not, like, a psycho. Or maybe there's a requirement for him to do it. I'm also actually really hoping that some of the oceans can use overdrive. Maybe just the upper ones. Like, like if, if he can, I feel like... It's kind of not a, uh, not like for, um, not like a guarantee, but almost a, it, it's a borderline requirement, I feel like, for Shiki. Because versus Wise and Homura, we knew that they, like, they went into those fights with, oh yeah, they have training, they just got off a of training arc, but we didn't really know what exactly they got from it. We, you know, as we see now, like, better control over their ether gear and stuff, and obviously overdrive. But Shiki, we know, already has overdrive. And not only that, like, we know that he's already able to fully go into overdrive. He was able to do that before the Xenolith training. So, whatever his full extent is here, I... One, I don't see it having to get drawn out. But I feel like he has, like, like Callum has to have overdrive, I think, to really be a threat to Shiki. It's just one of those things, like, when you have a, when you have a baseline level of kind of, like, status that your power is at, then I feel like when you're up against an opponent, they should be at least in that general category, um, unless there's, like, something to really compensate for it. Uh, a, a way to describe it is, is, like, the difference between, well, you know, just looking at, like, Mishima's other series, like, look, difference between, like, Dragon Force and overdrive is overdrive is something that is across like the whole power system if, if you have an ether gear you, like overdrive is accessible to you dragon force in fairy tales is specifically a dragon slayer set ability it's something that has to do with a, a very specific branch of power it'd be like if you know and, and i think of like in in eden zero like the, a, a ether gear specific powers and abilities that are you know it, it is in this branch it, it, like look at shiki's abilities and stuff like stuff that only he can do not just that so he can do anyone with his specific type of ether gear and that's kind of like how it is with um you know different magics in fact but the difference is in eden zero instead all overdrives have the potential, or sorry, all ether gears have the potential eventually to achieve overdrive. It, it, it's closer to something like Bonkai from Bleach, where it's just something that it, it is an option that if you ever reach it, like the sec the second you get the power, that possibility is there for you. It just depends on you know your level of training and skill and power, and, and you know it, it's way more dependent on the user at that point and their effort going into it rather than just automatically getting it or something that will eventually just show up. But I, I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit because, like, I like Callum. Callum and Lyra were the two that I was pretty hyped for going into the oceans because I, I knew that they were contest winners, but I knew Mishima was also going to do, like, his own tweaks on them because, like, you know, they still have to fit into his story. They still have to, like, make sense with whatever he's building so that he can't just take anything and shove it in there because, you know, you could get something that either doesn't make sense or hurts something to the story or whatever, you know, anything that might cause any narrative or writing problems so callum i i really want to know what like callum is doing here with his ether gear and like how exactly it works my guess was like he has like a ranged level of uh like because we saw that like a ranged level of just general fighting prowess that he's got with it because when shiki is talking to rebecca that handprint shows up on his face and then bam callum's here i wonder if like what if he can essentially like shoot out his like his handprint or like whatever he's using this ether gear and then like appear right there like atomize right to it think of it just like kind of like how teleporting works in some series uh, like in a sci in a sci-fi series but he's setting the location himself i think that'd be really cool and it would fit in really well with also the sci-fi style and it would give him like his power like if he's 
de-atomizing and then rematerializing wherever his mark is set. I think that would make it a lot more balanced. Because, like, the thing with, like, atomic powers, it, it they are really cool. Like, obviously, like, when you get to, like, create, like, look at, like, Dragon Joe, like, Alchemy and stuff. When you get to, like, really OP abilities, they're badass. But you can't just give them to anybody. You have to make sure when you put them on a character that it's not going to cause any problems. Like, imagine if, if Callum was, like, he had the power just to fully atomize people, and he wanted Shiki dead on the spot. He could have already killed him, uh, unless unless there's, like, some form, like I said, of requirements that goes into his ability. Like, imagine that he has to get, like, each of his, uh, you know, areas affected by his ether has a mark. Like, maybe he's got to get uh, a handprint and a kick on, in, on from each leg on somebody, and then bam, atomize. Or something like that, where there's, like, some weird kind of set rule and process in order to get to that op ability um either way i did like the stuff with lyra i thought that was pretty interesting just like her her game because she is she is of Nero's empire she is on a, like an antagonist she is on the enemy side so she has to have a level of antagonist existence to her match with uh with rebecca it can't just be a fun game like she's saying that they're gonna do a card game and every time you, like, lose a point, you have to, like, take off pieces of clothing. I'm doing, doing some fan servicey stuff for, and, you know, some, some hype for her show. Like, her show, like, I'll talk about, like, the reality of her uh, her card game show in a second. But at the end of it, like, the, the loser, when you get down to nothing, then you apparently have to lose limbs. So what's Rebecca going to do if she wins? Like, is she going to have Lyra lose, like, a limb? Like, is she going to lose a leg or arm or, like... I actually, I was going to say an eye, but I actually, I like her, what are they called, dichromatic eyes or whatever. I, I like that she's got the two set colored eyes. It's just, it's enjoyable to look at. But her whole game, it, it, it's funny, it was like, in reality, her, her show, if allowed, would be such like one of those... But it would be a success just based off of, like, everything around it. It's, like, uh, the game itself is is clearly something I would assume simple. I don't imagine it's going to be too complicated. Uh, and on top of that, it leads to, you know, it leads to some, some sexy fan service stuff. But then after that, it gets to, like, some dark kind of, like, aggressive, like, uh, you know, cutting of limbs. Like, people are getting amputated, like, parts of their body. Like, and then it gets to, like, some darker. This is, like, prime time dark web stuff this would be something that if uh dead tube the dead tube guy wanted to do a show he's like hey man can you can you please design a game for my series and just say or, uh just so you know man it has to be shown and no 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 crazy sentence stuff oh, don't worry i got gotcha. you this is this is like what you would get in one of the more tame ways to take that and put it in shonen without being like chainsaw man of like how can we push the how can we push the uh, the content to be just at the very border of Shonen before it starts getting into, like, almost any area? But uh, Callum stuff is really cool. Like, he's turning into fog at one point, which is really neat. Like, how exactly his power works, I think, is going to be one of the fun parts coming up here in the, in the next couple chapters. Because I do like his... I like his design. I like his powers. The only thing that I, like, when I was looking at his initial stuff was, like, his backstory seemed a little bit close to Jin's, but it's, like, it didn't really matter, and I, I again, the, I like the rest of his stuff, so I'm happy to finally see him utilize. Oh, also, um, the added extra bit to Wise's Overdrive, I thought they were, like, wings, like, either, like, wings, like, jet boosters or something, and my other guess was, like, pi like, energy pylons or something, kind of almost like, um... Kind of like when you look at, like, Tesla coils or something. I was kind of thinking of, like, something like that. Like, maybe they stored power. But they're they're shaped differently, this chapter. Like, when you look at them, they look... And I don't mean it's, like, kind of crazy. Like, oh, well, they're shaped differently. What does that mean? I, I think it means they're more flexible. So maybe they're not... They're not for storing energy. Like, like for, at least from what I imagine, maybe they're more like cords. Kind of like when you think of someone like Cyborg from DC. How... When he, you know, starts doing all his tech stuff, Mother Bok tech, he has, like, all the different wires and cables and stuff come out of his arms and stuff and kind of, you know, hijack into machines and start rewiring and doing all that stuff. That's what I, I at least imagine these are, because otherwise I don't know why they're so long. Like, when they were, like, uh, I don't know, a foot and a half, maybe, maybe two feet, and thinking they were, had something to do with story energy, okay? But, like, at the beginning of the chapter, these things have to be, like, three to four feet in length. They're, they're way longer than his arms. So the only thing that, at least I would guess, that would make sense to me 
would be something like that. Like, like if he went up to a machine and they just plugged it in and he's able just to fully write stuff. And then the best, or at least the general uh, usage, I would assume, is like, say he's in a fight and they're kind of going around like Doc Ock style and just touching stuff and reconfiguring it. That's what I assume it would work at least. Um, it's one of those ones where I feel like we just need to see it more in action to really get a better grasp of how exactly it works. The, the bit in there as well of the oceans having like a group chat i thought that was actually really funny I, I i really did like that because one it shows that from their perspective they're not all evil they're not like bad vicious, they're not all sure up pretty much they they're just guys like they, they just they talk to each other they, they seem pretty chill even like the very odd, much more odd ones like uh nase have a much more kind of like kind of casual relationship with the other ones like we just saw like in the previous chapters he's a little crazy he seems like his his whole like super hypnosis was like making somebody like kill themselves and enjoy it. like definitely some demented stuff but here we're seeing a, a much more calm side it reminds me of um the opening kind of like the opening areas to Sirius Island when Zankro was kind of like having some more casual conversations with Mike Melody and Kane Akaro. And he like, you know, his character, we didn't get a ton, uh, like insight onto him, but like what, what you're demonstrating, he's like, he doesn't care about allies. Like he's, he's a cold blooded killer. He's, he's a bit sadistic, but it was cool to see him in, in a light that made him look a bit more human. And I think that's really good with, uh, with what we got with Nase and uh, the whole group chat as well. I, I just really enjoyed that. And then like, he's explained to them that they have overdrive and, uh, and then like Milani's like, yeah, I know that's how I lost. And then Callum's just like posting goofy emojis like it, i thought that was just pretty funny and one thing i wanted to bring up it's nothing to really go too much into it's just something to kind of take note of because i was wondering like what is what is mishima's plan going to be for the large-scale forces of Nero's empire if we're already losing oceans like this and i was thinking like maybe he's going to end up getting the older oceans because like in this this is just an example of um of the newer generation of of the oceans like that they've got a group chat they're, they're like way more modern kind of people this is this, they're like borderline from like just getting into discord and uh and just talking to each other there they, they got an im group amongst their uh amongst their unit so i i would assume uh, was oh my is it fabiano i think was his name i was trying to remember if it's uh fabian or fabiano i think it's fabiano uh we, we haven't seen really anything of him but i i assume that he like actually was it mentioned he's part of the older oceans i assume so just because of his age him and saika but like, would the older oceans coming back, like, be, like, a huge benefit just because, you know, we get some, like, retired kind of guys? Because the group, like, the difference between them, and I only thought of this because I, I had a similar idea, is it'd be, like, the older oceans were more for narrow, whereas, like, the newer oceans are more of Shura's age. So it's, like, you could have the older oceans come out and, and not be, they don't have to be as powerful. I, I would assume they're more powerful because they're probably older, more experienced stuff. But the more experienced thing, it's the bigger thing that I would put as, like, danger to them. Because they would have way more usage with their ability. And that is, that is one thing that always is, is something you got to take into account when you have people with very tricky powers. Is, like, the extent they can use them. And someone like, easy example, Drac and Joe, who has a super flexible power with 200 plus years using it he's able to utilize it to like its full effect um but I, yeah other than that we got like stuff going on with uh, the games between lyra and rebecca and i i'm still hoping lyra ends up like kind of becoming like a an ally kind of like laguna and ends up joining the eden zero crew or becomes somebody adjacent enough to it that she's a returning character i do like her design and i like her character because she's she's got a little bit of it of like the you know the antagonist side to her but it, it's like wrapped up in a lot of like layers of being a better like a much more kind individual but there's just that kind of like sadistic core that's there obviously she's an antagonist she's she's dealing with somebody that is a threat to her com her i was gonna say country but it's like her a threat to her cosmos to the empire that she serves under like lives in and the last bits on the chapter you know we got to see justice and eraser talking and you know stuff going on with that and then homura runs into creed and i i remember in the when people were talking about the spoilers, they mentioned, like, oh, yeah, Homura runs into a mystery person. I was like, who could it be? Maybe it's Jaguar or somebody, like, really cool. It's like Creed. I don't have any problems with Creed, but, like, running into Creed at the end doesn't really do anything for me. Like, it doesn't get me hyped. Because at least right now, uh, Creed is just... Creed is, like, a... He, he's just, like, a fanboy character to Homura. We know that, but, like, outside of that, there's nothing really to him. He doesn't really have a whole lot to make his character stand out. 
and just based off of where he's at now, I would assume that he, you know, the uh, ship with Hamora isn't possible. If he was cooler and, 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 you know, maybe had, like, a lot more to him, maybe. So maybe eventually in the future. But as of right now, like, he's just some dude. Like, he's just some dude. He's got a strange haircut. And uh, he's got, like, a... Like, he's got, like, a support power. Like, there's nothing really to him that would make him kind of flashy enough and stand out enough. I I, I think, personally, to pair with Hamora. Because Hamora, Hamora is, like, definitely, like, most favorite girl, I, I would assume, for most fans. Like, at least from what I've seen, she's... The clear front runner for Eden Zero Girls, and I feel like if somebody's gonna get shipped with her, it has to be somebody of like high quality value, like someone like Jin. If it was Jin, I'd be like, yeah, I can see that. Jin's a badass. He's cool. He's a good guy. He's part of the crew, um, and it, it would make sense somewhat to me. It'd be a weird shit, but I'd be like, you know what, I'm okay with it. Whereas Creed, at least right now, it Creed does some cool shit in the future, and you know, get some like character development. We get to see who he is and get the insight to what he's like and everything. That's a different story. That's a game changer. But as of right now, it's just like eh, I don't really know what like what this does other than just kind of like all like all this the like the okay. I'm gonna an example just because it's um uh, it's just the easiest way to use. It. So like at the end of the last chapter. We had, obviously, everything kind of, like, setting up, like, the game with, uh, with Hamor and everything. And then, you know, we're seeing where everyone is kind of, like, getting set up in their matches and stuff. And Wise got Overdrive. Like, we got set up on a really good ending that was, like, oh, Wise got Overdrive. Nasa's going to be on the run. And we're going to see how things progress from here. All this ending really does is, like, tell me that in the next chapter we're going to get some funny moments between Creed and Hamor. Like, him simping a little bit. Not a bad thing, but it's, like, it's more of, like, a kind of comfortable, um, funny cliffhanger i think just because i know it's going to be followed with some comedy and then like i said the, the fight with shiki and callum i think really needs to like it needs to set a precedence i don't expect shiki to get like a oh i gotta use my secret technique i'm expecting maybe like a little bit more than orc i i feel like uh orc was like even even though it's like shiki went overdrive and smashed him and shiki got stronger since then i feel like at least a little bit more effort than that is is required for Callum to really feel like a threat like because like on top of that like he's apparently an ex-mercenary so he has to be powerful if we could get like Shiki goes into overdrive and has a short scuffle and maybe uses a new technique and by the end of the fight he's like wow you know that took some you know some energy and me see him sweating and it's not like oh man I'm so tired I can't hold my form it's like oh wow that was, that was a good match because obviously sure is going to be his main fight in this arc but I am hoping that Callum gives us, like, a really good display. Because I have liked the displays from the ocean so far. Um, I don't know which of them are going to stay. Uh, usually that's how it is with Mishima when he has a group. He'll have a couple of them will have, like, deeper insights in their character, some backstory, and uh, some build into larger scale events. And then some of them will just, you know, they'll be antagonist characters the easy example look at some look at like the spriggan 12 like half of them didn't get back source half of them are important you know tied into things and ongoing events of story in it. it that's how i assume a lot of things are gonna go with him because usually he tries to tie some things together but like then you get the characters someone like nasa who i assume are just gonna be like they exist whereas like someone like lyra maybe they don't have any ties to the uh to larger skill events yet but maybe she'll become a member of the eden zero uh crew at some point but we'll see either way comment below uh thumbs up the video but from the like button subscribe button check out my other videos but i appreciate it. Sorry, subscribe thank you all for listening bye